Hey guys, and welcome back to my stream update for, of course, the stream that is the Redondo Way or El Semilero, whichever one you prefer to call it. Uh, this is the stream update from Friday, the 24th of November, and all of a sudden we are rattling through. We're getting so much done. I'm on the finances screen at the minute, but that is not the important bit. So ordinarily, you know, we start this and we're sort of sat on the schedule. This is where we're sat, and but. What you'll remember if you've been keeping up with the updates or if you were in the stream on Wednesday night and you're playing catch up for the Friday night stream is that we'd actually ended the season on that great, great game in which we uh, we used overload and we, we overcome a 2-0 loss. And that's all well and good. But I did say at that point, we are now going to be at the, the basically the point in time where we need to start reassessing the club, working out what players worked for us in the first season, what players didn't work for us and going through not just the first squad but the reserve squad and the under 20 squad to work out who's absolutely useless and costing us money when we can actually earn a little bit of money off them so we did that and the whole of the stream i streamed for a little over three hours and the whole of the stream was all about going into the squads and taking a look at say for example uh we're going to we're going to yeah, this one's a funny one, but first of all, I'll talk about my my some of my little selection screens here, which are on the custom. There we go, brilliant. Uh, so we have Redondo's fee, but this is what I'm looking for in my players. I'm looking for players who have got uh, uh, teamwork, work rate, determination, uh, bravery, uh, and I want stamina and I want work rate as well, so that they can play my quite aggressive high press tactic throughout the whole of a game, and then be able to come back three days later and do it again. So that's the reasonings behind them. So I've been keeping an eye on that, and I've been wanting now. I've been wanting to hang on to players. We're in the the 20 squad now but that's irrelevant i've been wanting to hang on to players whom are um good enough in those areas or on their way to being good enough in those areas and then move on the players who are maybe not so great in those areas we'll get we'll, we'll change the phillips we'll go up to the senior squad and so forth um so what we did is to assess at the end of the season we used some of the filters that i've sort of pre-built and put into the game uh, which was sort of passing effectiveness so we could assess the midfielders um, we also wanted to assess them via uh, their creative play, which is who's doing the assisting, who's getting the key passes and things like that. And then, of course, I mean, I'm not going to go through all these filters, but we've also got uh, goals, uh, goal conversion. Uh, we've got defensive play as well. So we could look at who's been doing what over the course of a year and ascertain which players we want to keep, which one players we don't mind telling if we had to and what players we'd actually like to move on because they've got no use for us. Um, so that's what we did and we worked it all out we went through every squad and then we started to transfer players out of the team uh, so we've got the transfer history here you can see we've actually moved out a lot of players and there's a couple of big ones in there so before i start talking about who's gone i mean it's not really i'm not really going to go into any detail of m many of them we'll uh, we'll obviously just go for a couple of the big ones but what I want to do, and anyone who's been playing in Argentina knows that it's quite hard to keep a club afloat. You have to almost have a conveyor belt of players coming through. You want to be getting your youth team in, assessing who you want to keep. Try and build up the players who you don't want to keep. Try and sell them on for a bit of money because that's how you keep the clubs afloat. More often than not, if you get a good player in the Argentinian league, a bigger club from almost anywhere in the world will come along and pluck them away from you. Yeah, and you've got no reason. And one of the one of the things behind that is, as we can see here, we've had Sporting Gijon come in for uh, Javier C uh, Cabrera. Uh, Uruguayan who plays in the in the team, he was valued at two point two million. They came in at three point five, uh, raising to three uh, four point three, and the the chairman just went, you know what, yoink, we'll take that money, and uh, we'll sell him under your nose. I actually didn't mind because I'd highlighted the fact that I was going to sell him anyway, uh, because for the money that he was costing me on a weekly basis. Um, he wasn't doing he wasn't doing the job to justify the money so we were happy to sell him anyway so we went through and as you can see here we've got some decent sales in Guillermo Benitez as well and now Guillermo Benitez him and Piovi have sort of argued a little bit over who's starting at left back so it made sense to sell one of them I didn't mind uh, Benitez going so but but the whole point behind all of this is we wanted more money the reason we want more money is we want to make a better infrastructure at the club we want to get better staff and we want to be able to go and do our transfer business and we can plug gaps that have been left behind by players who we've sold. Uh, I want to go do a bit of transfer business. I actually have a lump of cash there so I can go to the board and say, look, spend it on training facilities or spend it on youth facilities. Spend it on something that builds the infrastructure of the club up so that we can have great staff and we can have great players coming through. And that's exactly what I did, which takes us to the finances screen. We went from having zero budget. Last season, we had zero budget and we had nothing in the wage budget. We now have 5.7 million transfer budget, as well as a 90 gram wage budget of which we can still spend 54,000 quid. Win. 
That is the whole point. That's what we went out to do. And that is exactly what we've done. The overall balance at the club is 7.5 million. If we go to the projections ever so briefly, because I'm realising time is wearing on and we uh, we try and keep these videos nice and short. The projections are still not great. And that's because of the way the clubs are, because of the way you're spending money. And if you're not selling players, you're going to keep going down. So we need to make sure this conveyor belt keeps on moving. Get the infrastructure in place. Get great youth. Train them very bloody well with great facilities and make money to carry us through to the next season. That's been the stream, stream update for tonight, guys. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you didn't, drop a dislike. It makes no odds. Other than that, guys, hopefully I'll see you in tomorrow's update video. But other than that, I'll catch you later and I'll see you in a bit. So thanks for joining me for the stream update tonight. Don't forget, if you did enjoy the update, you can head over to my channel at twitch.tv. The link will be in the description where you can join me live or, of course, you can watch past broadcasts just in the My Videos section. While I'm here, I'd also like to mention We Stream FM. It's a group of streamers bringing together the community over on Twitch. So if you like what you see, don't forget to come and check us out. Links in the description for our Discord and also the WeStream FM Twitter. And lastly, guys, I want to mention the five-star potential podcast where myself and four of the other streamers come together every week to talk things all FM. So, yeah, if you enjoyed it, don't forget to come and check me out. But other than that, guys, thank you very much. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like, and I will catch you in the next one. See you in a bit.